Welcome everyone. What's going on? Oh, slightly late start. What time is it? Two minutes late. God. How's everyone doing? Good start to the week. I've had a pretty good day today, to be fair. It's been... Um, I've not got anything really... I've got a bit booked in this week, but nothing major. And then today, is sort of just... I had a bit of an admin day today. Um, we were supposed to be driving down to Oxford. And then we didn't bother. So I had a bit of a free day. So I've been doing a bit of admin and just catching up on some stuff. And work's just been sort of coming in. So it's going well today. Turned it around. The Lawn Ranger, welcome. Tyler. Sorry, Taylor. Good evening. Slow start, mate. Been out scouting for work. I've just this second put a post on a local community group. See if I can find it for you. Lindsay, welcome. I haven't joined um I haven't joined this group before. And I just just joined it today. <clears throat> and I wanted to quickly get a post out tonight because you can only you can only put community posts on. Uh, sorry, you can only put adver adverts on for businesses on Mondays. So I wanted to sort of quickly get it in before the stream started. Although, I'm not sure if they've posted it yet. I think it's still pending. J JPEX? Am I saying that right? JPEX? Welcome. I don't, I don't think I've seen your name in the chat before. How you doing? Steve? Euro? Express Services Monkey? Hello everyone. Coming in thick and fast today, isn't ya? Uh, where is my post? Your content. There. 16 minutes ago. I think, does that mean they posted it? Ah, oh, pending. I've just put, thanks for letting me join the group. Um, does anyone want their gutters clearing? And I've, I've stuck a couple of gutter cleaning photos on there. I just like this photo. I think that's a really nice photo. <laughs> I like the wood in the background. Um, the, the colors are very autumnal. And then I've stuck a couple of pressure washing pictures on there as well, just in case. But this area, this bark green, um, it's quite near it's like a couple of towns over, a couple of villages over. And I'd like to get in on this area because it's they've got insane houses. They're huge. And um and I, I think it's probably the trouble is with places like that, it's probably the older generation that don't really use Facebook, so I don't know if it's gonna be very successful me advertising in the community page or not but every single time I've advertised in these Facebook community groups I've put like one advert out on maybe two or three pages and every single time it's brought in work and so I think it's worth doing but for the the five yeah, the two or three minutes it takes to, to join and answer their questions and read their rules. And then just taking the effort to once a week just stick a post out. I think it's really worth it. I'd recommend it anyway. Dr. Sexy. Interesting name. Welcome. Return of Ammo. How's it going? What's your community group called, mate? I don't necessarily mean my community group. Um, I'm talking about like Facebook community groups like local pages where you can advertise um, if you did want to look at my community group we've got a we've got a discord um, where if you wanted to become a paid member of the channel you'll get access to the discord and um, you can basically that music just got louder. 
Or is it my headphones? You can basically get hold of me 24-7. If that's your thing. Here's our Discord, look. What's going on today? Have you got a TDS meter, Jake? Could always check the PPM of the water in the barrel after you have filled one to make sure it's still reading zero. A TDS meter. Is that something to do with pure water? TDS meter. Hello, Mishi. Hello. Are you coming to join us? Mm. You want to be too, didn't you? Only if you want to. <laughs> what? Only if you want to. I don't want to hold you captive. If you'd rather be watching Making a Mystery Murderer or um, Love is Blind. Well, I'm watching, or... how do you know? Is it actually? Yeah. This is Mishi. Or Sophie, as she's otherwise known. Evening, Russ. Darren, welcome. Uh, I post every week on local Facebook pages, always get inquiries. I've been trying to do door to door for window cleaning jobs. It's worked well, but today was cold and I couldn't get into it. Mate, I couldn't feel my fingers today. We just um, we had a little walk around the lake this afternoon. And my nose is still cold. <laughs> since yeah, is. since like four hours ago three hours ago and my fingers are about to drop off and Maya was fine just riding her bike absolutely loving it I was actually not that bad my legs were cold you did start to win just towards the end a little bit uh, Corian welcome did you spill that? Mm -hmm. are you left handed? no right handed No worries, Taylor. Nice it's got lemon ice in it. Okay. Mm. Um, I found my Pure Seal nozzle adapter. So when you go on the Pure Seal course, who's joined the Orange Army, Taylor? Welcome. Thank you very much, mate. Welcome. You can now. Um, you should have access to the to the Discord now if you wanted to join in. What brand of gin is that? Thank you very much. That is that is water with lemon ice cubes in it. Um, so Pure Seal give you these little baggies when you do their um, approved applicator course. And you get this 3D printed nozzle. Um, and I had no way of fitting this to my water fed pole before. And they give, they give you, I don't know if you can see, they give you these little That one's a 6.5B, whatever that means. That's a 10B. Is that the orifice size? Because that's quite big if it is. Quarter inch BSP. Um, but then recently, Squeaky Clean Dave has given me this gooseneck adapter um, that can just screw onto my waterfed pole. And this goes in here. Just about... It doesn't go in all the way, but it goes in enough to keep it on there solid. Um, and then your little um, hose plugs into there. And so this is great for like soft washing. If you just wanted to apply biocide, for example, to a roof um, through like the gardener backpack. This is idyllic. And I haven't been able to use it up until now. And I just found it in the cupboard today. I don't know why it says assault on there. It's a bit violent, isn't it? Any need? Um, these don't look like fan jets, though. They're not. They're not fan nozzles like I I use. I I tend to use my gardener backpack with the, with the brush, the water fed pole, and the brush on the end. I've got two fifty degree fan jets on it, and it it sprays the chemicals nice and evenly. And that's what I like to do, really. So it might be that I can just put... That looks like the same thread as what I've got on my surface cleaner. So it might be that I can just stick one of them on instead. Taylor, thank you again for, for joining. Very kind of you. Um, fingers crossed for an early spring. Um, 
let's get the pressure washing jobs rolling in again. I remember, was it last year or the year before we had snow at the end of March? <laughs> do you remember? Uh, I do. Yeah, because it's like your birthday, wasn't it? Yeah. Was that the one where you were 30? I, d uh, I don't know. Hmm. Not sure. Can you send me the link to the Discord, please, mate? If you go onto your YouTube channel and look at your membership, um, or go onto my YouTube channel and look at your membership perks, the link should be there, Glyn. Uh, going to start my exterior cleaning business this year. How long did it take for you to transition to full-time work? I think it was almost a year. I think I, I had like a solid... It was definitely more than six months, wasn't it? Yeah. I had my little machine. I had my little pressure washer. You started like... Start of that summer. And then you went... It, you did about April, wasn't it? Maybe you went full-time. Yeah, I had my, my little machine for six months, yeah. then that broke, and then I had my bigger machine for like another six months after that, and then my calendar got really busy at, at like the end of March, and my, um, and, and I, I had my van, I bought my equipment, and I was ready to go, and it was like, I can't do my full-time job and do this pressure washing on the side as well. Like I just can't keep up with everything I'm trying to do at the moment. And it was the perfect time of year to go full time. I had two months worth of work booked in the calendar and I had two months worth of savings as well. And I had my van and I had my equipment. I didn't need to buy anything else after that. Everything I'd earned in the pressure washing that I was doing on the side, I put back into the business and bought uh, a new machine New lances, chemicals, hose reel, mounted everything in the van, water tank. Yeah, it was like, it was the perfect time of year to, to sort of leave my job. And I, I left my job with a zero hour contract with them. So if I, if it did get quiet, which it did over the winter, I was still, at, still able to go back and do a few hours here and there with them. That was very useful. So I'd recommend like, don't just leave your job and buy loads of equipment and think customers are going to start ringing you because that's not the way it works it's a very gradual transition um, you need to take it slowly and don't burn your bridges like if you've got a good relationship with your work at the moment um, don't don't um, burn those bridges I had a um I don't know if anyone watched the latest video, but I said like I was gradually thinking about getting into roof cleaning. And when the when the perfect roof comes along and it's like a good price and it's good access and all that sort of stuff, then I might consider doing my first roof clean. And the perfect roof clean came along today and I've I've got the quote, I've got the job. And it's it's this job, um, it's this driveway that I did. Um, how long ago? Five months ago. So we cleaned and pressure, um, cleaned, sanded and sealed this driveway. Um, and all this, all these steps out the back. Uh, Bio sided the whole area. She wants this doing again because these are full of leaves again. Oh, that was when my uh, my lance broke. It was spraying by itself. How dangerous is that? High pressure lance just start, just wouldn't turn off. Um. But yeah, this is like a big bungalow, <coughs> and I followed up today because it's been almost six months since she had her biocide treatment. I followed up and I said, "Do you want me to reapply the biocide?" Um, to keep you going for like another six to eight months and uh, she said yes but I'd also like a quote for the for, to, to, for you to get rid of the moss on the roof and so I've given her a very cheap price um, let me just find it on Google Earth so you guys can see what I'm talking about
This is where my com computer goes all slow. Okay, Sorry, Misha. Say that again. Do you want to hide the address? I was thinking about hiding the address, but I've already won the work, so I don't think it really matters, does it? No one's going to try and undercut me. No, but I mean... Hmm. What do you reckon? Uh, no problems, mate. I'm completely new to this all. I just spent 6k on equipment with no idea how to use it. Nice. I mean, it's six grand on pressure washing equipment. It's probably good stuff, isn't it? Just um, start with your own house and then see if your parents need their, need anything doing around theirs. Grandparents, friends, take pictures of everything that you're doing and then set up a Facebook page and just start posting pictures. <clears throat> I'm doing the Pure Seal course on Wednesday. Any other advice? Um, which module are you doing for your Pure Seal course express services? Because I only did module one. And then um, come away with this Bible. And it's um, this is one of the most useful things about the course. is Because there's... It's like trying to take in all the information on the day, but then this goes into more detail and you get to take it home with you. And so this takes you through every single hard surface, like ground surface, tarmac, uh, resin, block paving, um, decking. It goes over literally everything, how to prep it, clean it and seal it afterwards. It goes over repointing. Um, biocide, sodium hypochlorite, it literally tells you everything. Painting concrete? Yeah, painting, well done. Thanks. Painting, um, well, sealing pattern imprinted concrete. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was, a, it was a brilliant, brilliant course. Zach gave me the address earlier, I can't. I will um, try and get to all your messages. Bear with me, guys. I'm trying my best. I'm just trying to do little bits here and there. Now, I always thought the same, but if you approach people properly and step back when they answer the door and don't be pushy with things, it can work really well. I've always been a bit intimidated with um, with door-to-door -door sales. Sort of, is that called canvassing? Knocking someone's door and seeing if they need your services. Cold calling. Cold calling. I could do it, and I think I'd be quite good at it, but I, it weirds me out a little bit. I'm not sure if it's something I want to do. I just bought a Parker brand machine. Need to play with it and start marketing to get some jobs. That's the one that I first started with. Naz, welcome. Evening, bud. Hope all is well. Weather getting crazy cold. Yeah, it's, I've just had to put a... My toes are cold because I've usually got a radiator down here, like a little oil fill radiator. And I've uh, I put it in the van now, on top of the pump, or next to the pump, to try and stop it freezing. It's going to be minus two, like minus two every single night this week. So I don't want my... I, was, I put it in the, in the Discord today. Um, I, you just got to be very careful of your pump freezing and then expand the water inside will expand if it freezes and you can cause major damage to the internals of your pump if anyone's interested um, there's a video from squeaky clean Dave and he goes over how to frost proof your uh, pressure washer I'll post that in the chat now for anyone who's interested and if you don't know who Squeaky Clean Dave is, go and have a look on his YouTube channel and give him a sub because it's very, it's very, it's full of information for uh, people just starting out like us. Um, got our first ever quote, uh, quoted job on Saturday, concrete slabs. Any tips, best, uh, any tips to leave best job possible? Want to leave an impression, not on the concrete. <laughs> Uh, Sean, good question. If they're like classic, like um, council concrete slabs, 
you may find that if you're too close you can cause etching marks you want to get close enough to remove the algae and not leave streaks but then if you go too close there's a chance you're going to leave streaks through etching and it's a very like it's a very sensitive surface i, I did one the other day um i'll post it in the i'll post it in the chat because the way we, we resolved it we had to get close to clean them um, effectively um, and we did cause some streaks and marks but what we what we ended up doing is just going back over it what am I trying to do here going back over it in a different direction to sort of cancel out the streaks so we went we went in one direction and then went back in the other direction it's this one here it's a long video but if you just scroll towards the end um, where we did this patio then if you can see these streaks on on the stream here but if you go on the video you'll see it quite clearly and I, I talk through what our process is we we pressure wash it I attempt to to put some hypo down to um, to clear I thought they might have been organic streaks these are these are definitely organic streaks where maybe that needs to slow down a little bit to um, to get rid of the spots properly but these black spots and the, some of these green spots you won't get rid of them with just wa just water alone so this is where it's like really important to use chemicals to get the result for the customer because people that aren't using chemicals that's the difference between someone that's offering like a complete service and someone that's just doing pressure washing as like a side job. Um, you can even see the streaks there from the head cam. I can't believe this new camera. My, my phone the other day, I dropped it off a ladder and now the screen is totally black and it's cracked. Um, won't turn on so I can't get anything from the screen I can still hear the notifications and stuff but nothing's nothing's happening when I press it and then my camera this DJI I've just spent like 460 quid on it and because I've been using it as a webcam I didn't put the hard case on it this hard case here and then I took it out with me and then it the tripod fell and the back screen smashed so I smashed my phone and then a day later, I smashed my new camera as well. I'm fuming. But luckily I found my old Pixel phone um, under Luca's bed. And it's great, I love it. Um, I forgot what I was doing, but yeah. You've got the uh, thingy on your that phone. The what? The calendar, the joint calendar. Yeah, what? Oh, that's good. I've got everything, it, it's literally, you could have had the joint calendar on your new phone. Joint you calendar. Just didn't decide to put it on. What do you mean? The calendar that I made up for both of us to have access to. I don't know what you're talking about. The one that you just got a notification for it. Oh, the one that I scrubbed away because I didn't know what it was yeah. for. Longer. Sorry, Mish. Mm. Um. So yeah, with with concrete slabs, um, take some hypo with you because you'll probably need it if it's quite green and if there's lots of shaded areas with overhanging foliage, black spots and stuff, it's likely that you're going to need hypo. And if you do find that you're leaving streaks, hypo it, see if that gets rid of it. And if it doesn't, go back over it in the opposite direction to, to sort of leave streaks in the other direction and it will sort of cancel it all out. Are you going to the expo? Yes. Yeah, I think... Uh, some of the lads in the Discord are getting a hotel at the Cleaning Expo. Um, we're all going to have a drink, I think, and maybe get some food. I don't know what the plan is yet, but you, you're you going to come to that with me again. I wasn't invited. You're invited now. I'm inviting you. What day is it? It's not the day of my wolf run, is it? I don't know. Can someone remind us what the day of the Expo is, please? Jet Mac delivery of a new washer this morning. Nice. Which one did you go for? What um, what kind of machine is it? Um, 
The expo is in Stonely in Warwickshire. Oh, Al yeah. House, welcome. Hit the like button, get more views with the YouTube YouTube algorithm. Uh, watch the video earlier, Jake. Savage. A lot of work done in a day. Thanks, mate. What biocide do you use for driveways? Uh, I don't always use biocide for driveways. Most of the time it's hypo. Uh, but when I do, it's back 50 from pure seal. I'd, I'd actually appreciate if you're going to buy anything from pure seal. Um, I've got an affiliate link. Um, I don't really make much money through this affiliate link, but I'd be recommending them anyway because I've been using them for so long and their products are so good. Even if I wasn't affiliated with them, I would still recommend them to you. So um, here's my affiliate link. So that's a link to their website. Now, if you click that link and now buy something, um, I get a little bit of a kickback from it. So I'd appreciate it. I'd appreciate it. Would you? Yeah, because then you can buy me something nice. Um, so we've got Backclear Pro. And I believe this one... I can't remember whether this one contains alcohol or not. Um, this is generally better... Like above freezing temperatures, I believe. Um, but it's cheap. And it's got the dilution ratios down the bottom there as well. But if you, if you want to use it in this sort of weather, where it is dropping below sort of minus one, um, you might, might want to look at the BioClear Pro instead, which is apparently more suited for colder weather. I didn't know that there was any difference between them until recently. Until they, they, they put a post out on their Pure Seal Trade page. And also, once you become an approved applicator, you also get added to the approved applicator's private Facebook Facebook page, which is full of useful information. Oh, they approved my post. Nice. I've just joined a uh, Bart Green community page. Nice. I thought that might be worth doing. Well, to be honest, Zach was telling me I needed to do it, so... Wasn't on you. Eh? Hey? Wasn't on you then. No. Um, so this is the bungalow that I'm going to be cleaning. It's a very... The pitch is quite harsh on this. And Zach was saying, like, oh, it's a bungalow. We can we can just walk on the roof and pressure wash it with the normal lance. But I said, I, no, I'm not walking on that. Although it is, like... It's a bungalow and it's quite low. That's a high roof for a bungalow. It is a high roof and it's very very steep and so um so instead what i think i'm going to do tonight because she has confirmed i haven't taken a deposit or anything but she's a she's a customer of mine that that um that i've cleaned for before so i think what i'm going to do is buy tonight um an extendable pole from GBS. Well, these are the ones we saw at the expo that one time. We were like, whoa, that's so nice. That stuff's nice. And then... Yeah. But I didn't know them at the time. No. Then. They'll be there again this year. Oh, I was looking at I was looking at the wrong pole. I was thinking I can get I can get a a roof cleaning pole for less than 600 quid, but that's the roof scraping pole. The Pro 30. That was when you go onto the um to the scraper heads. And you go on to the ten, the ten blade scraper heads. You can then add 
the Pro 30. Mm. And that comes in at less than 600 quid, including that. That's just a scraper. So that's the 30 foot pole with 10 blades, which was the route I was going to go, but now I'm going high pressure. I think it's a bit more pricey to get one of them high pressure poles. Pressure washing equipment. Here we go. GVS 35 power pole with the water fed pole kit. I'm gonna go back downstairs now. Are you not enjoying this? Yeah, but I wanna do my own thing. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Do you mean thank you for coming and spending some time with me? Yeah, thanks so much. Do you want a cake? No. I'm eating good. You're eating good? After my chippy lunch. You I'm definitely... Try not to snack. You're definitely going swimming. I took grapes for lunch today. I Did you? Just eat. grapes? I didn't eat them. <laughs> You're as bad as Luca. No, I took them because I thought I need some lunch. But when they said they were going to, I was like, oh, there's no point in eating grapes now. Then, is there? That's good, isn't it? It's a step. You have to have them for breakfast. Are we still having McFlurries later? No. I ain't got no money. I need to say. That's a lie. I haven't. I'll just I'll just send Please. I'll send you some. No, it's alright. I'll have send you McFlurries. I'd like a McFlurry, please. I'm not getting you a McFlurry. You, you can't to you can't break a tradition. McFlurry Mondays has been a thing since I started this live stream. And if you're gonna take that away from us. Us Forty-five power pole. I think I need at least thirty-five feet. Seven sections. Love you. Um. Seven sections. Thirty-five foot. It's five foot nine collapsed. I reckon I'd need, I'd also need like a bigger, a bigger adapter to go in the bottom of the lance, because I think mine would be too, um, my hose, my hose fittings are too small now. Uh, sorry, too big to go on that. Has anyone got any experience with anything like this? Because this looks ideal to me. I know like it'd be nice to have a foot pedal um, because these to try and hold like a big extendable lance like that and pull a trigger at the same time for hours is very taxing it's very difficult I have had a go on, on a someone else's job they were doing a roof clean and he invited me and I, I, um, I went to have a go with him and helped him out for the day and it was very difficult. Has anyone got any thoughts on this kit here? I know you can't see the whole screen, I'm sorry. And I am going to get through your messages. I am. Where'd you get that book? That that was given to me from Pure Seal when you when you do any of their um, courses. They give you like a, a guide to everything. <clears throat> How do you quote jobs, mate? Do you use price per square meter? Most of the time, yep, yeah, it's, um, I literally just go on Google Earth. This one's a bit different because you can't really account for the pitch of the roof. Um, so if you were to go like this and, and sort of measure the drive, it's, it's nice and easy if the pictures are clear. Um, so I know this one kind of looks like this. And it goes around the back as well. It's going a bit slow because um, I'm trying to do lots of things at once on this computer. 
So that was kind of the area for this one. Um, you can do it in feet or in uh, meters or inches or whatever. So that's about 110 meters squared. Um, and so if you're struggling to price stuff, have a look at my website, smout.club. And then just type in your area. So that was 110 meters squared. Um, generally, a base price for like a, an area that big, if it's like tarmac or if it's concrete and you don't need to go back and resand, I would personally be at around three or three pound fifty per square meter. And then if I'm going back to resand, you can just tick this box here type in the price of the sand that you're purchasing from wherever you're you're buying it from you can choose to add like a labor cost on there to go back on another day when it's dry and resand it um, it will tell you roughly how many bags you might need and then it just adds it all up to the end adds it all up at the end and you've got like a rough guide price for for that that area but also you've got to consider that if you're just starting out and you're brand new to this you're not going to be offering the level of service that I'm offering. And so you might not be able to justify these sorts of prices to your customer. And I think that's really important to remember when people come on these Facebook pages and they're asking the most common question on these pages are, how much should I charge for this? Or what's everyone's going right? Stuff like that. And it's like, it's good to get an idea but you shouldn't be charging the same as what people who, you know, three, five, ten years experience, you should not be charging the same as these people if you've only just started yourself. And it also depends on the area as well. Some areas, um, the, the price per square meter is high and, and people are happy to pay, you know, the, the um, what's it called? The cost of living. Is higher in some in some areas. In other areas, um, a chap up in Scotland I spoke to the other day. He said I'll be lucky if I can do one pound fifty per square meter on block paving because people just don't pay it up here. So it all depends, really, mate. But this quoting tool might help you out. It's Smout Duck Club, and it's free. You've got access to that um, as long as people are finding it useful. We've got my trusted suppliers link here as well, which will take you to all the people that I've ever really bought stuff from and, and had good service from. Um, so yeah, I hope someone finds that useful. You do module one on Wednesday, nice. Where are you from, Orion? Do you have did you have to get a hotel? And is it still in Nantwich, or are they are they doing it somewhere else at the minute? Um, I'm sorry, I've just lost my place. I'm still like, I, there's been so many messages, but I'm still just trying to get through every single one. So you'll have to bear with me. I'm sorry. Uh, cracking course, mate, worth the fee for the networking opportunities alone. Yep, I'd agree. I learned a lot from some of the other people in the room, not necessarily just what was being taught. So. Express services, are you going to the uh, cleaning expo as well then? I tried my guttervac today, but the moss was frozen solid. <laughs> Managed it all though, come out really nice. Mate, uh, frozen gutters, I don't know if there's anything you can really do about that when your gutter clearing. We had, we had to reschedule, we had a big salon, it's quite a big building. And we had to reschedule it twice because both times we went the gutters were frozen. And there's just nothing you can do. <laughs> um, hi, mate. What's the worst thing that's happened to you since starting your business? Any horror stories? Uh, one comes to mind straight away, but I don't know if I should share it. I've got nothing to hide, whatever. Um, so I... I uh, <laughs> I 
I think I've got quite a like a weak bladder anyway. I, I go to the toilet quite often because I think because I drink a lot, like I have a lot of water, I have a lot of fluids, tea and coffee and stuff. So I generally just, I probably go about six or seven times a day. And when you're working with water as well, the urge to want to go to the toilet, um, you know, I could have gone to, I could have gone for a wee just before I left the house, arrive at my first job. And then as soon as the tap starts flowing, I'm like literally busting for a wee. <laughs> and um, I went through this stage last year of like uh, drinking so much water that all of a sudden the urge to go to the toilet would, would be so overwhelming that I wouldn't have time to like think and, and to like react to it. And when I was cleaning this person's uh, DJ, thanks for the sub. When I was cleaning this person's uh, faces and soffits, um, I guess just the just the, all the water and the coffee that I had that morning, and all of a sudden, I had this crippling pain that I desperately needed a wee, and it literally, I, I was like. I was, I was bent over on the floor in this, in this lady's back garden in so much pain and I was desperate and I, if I'd have moved, I'd have just wet myself. And so I thought, do I, do I try and knock on her door and ask her if I can use her toilet and risk pissing myself in front of her or do I just, do I just do it? because I'm wet anyway, like my boots are wet, my trousers have got water on them, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm washing the gutters and fascias above me, and so I'm just generally a little bit wet anyway. And my trousers were black, and I thought, whatever, I'm just going to do it, because it was so painful. And um, I thought it's either, it's either I do it in front of her, or, or on her carpet, <laughs> trying to make it to the toilet, or I just don't disturb her pretend everything's fine and just do it and so I had to just stand there and just wet myself and like it was such um it was like uh what's that word um I can't remember what the word is it was such a relief anyway and that was very embarrassing but yeah that's probably you probably weren't thinking that when it comes to horror stories. It was probably like malfunctions or something going wrong or something bad happening. But yeah, that's that's probably the worst thing that's happened to me since I've, I've been pressure washing. <laughs> I've put a squirt of antifreeze in my pump. I'll probably get slated for that, but it works and it hasn't knackered the pump yet. Um, no, I think that's not a bad idea. People do run antifreeze through the pump. I think you've just probably got to be careful which one you're using. Because there are some seals and stuff inside the pump so can't wait for the expo me neither i bring the pressure washer into the house to stop it from freezing yeah that's great if it's on wheels and you can move it about i have since mounted mine in the van um so i can't just take it out that easy but yeah um i think we all need a collab with you and your partner tackling the pressure washing job make a proper family affair you think she'd be up, I mean she yeah I think she'd be up for that to be fair I don't see why she wouldn't she's taking a she's taking a day off uh, at the end of this month so maybe we'll book something in together insulation in the van would be ideal for the weather at the moment and even a small oil radiator put on at night so the interior won't freeze that's exactly what I've done tonight yeah run an extension lead Stuck a little mini radiator in and it's got a thermostat on it so it won't get too hot. I'm having a lorry night heater put into my van. Nice. PWS do some good ones. Um, I was going to get one fitted. Darren invited me down. Um, but I just haven't had time to go over yet. Yeah, they've got these uh, heater kits.
we were supposed to be doing a video together on this, but I'm not sure I'm going to get over in time. I dropped my phone today whilst up a ladder. Luckily, I only smashed the screen. Luckily, you only smashed the screen. Is that lucky? <laughs> I don't think that's lucky. I think... Uh, I mean, if you can still use it, I suppose it's lucky, but... You watched a video of the oil radiator from Aldi that caught fire. Oh, that fills me with confidence, thanks. <laughs> Wouldn't trust it left overnight. To be fair, I do go out there and keep checking it because I am nervous. Thanks, yes, plan was turbo nozzle, then hypo, but we'll be sure to be careful with distance from slab. I don't know if I've got the videos from the job I did last week. No. This is a a decent time lapse that I've been meaning to. I want to stick something on TikTok with this because I think this would be quite a good TikTok video. Um, but this path was like a concrete path, and that was very streaky. And so I had to use hypo and sort of try and blend out a few of the other streaks as well. Yeah, I had a fan heater, one of those little fan heaters, but I'm, that's just in the shed now. I'm not using that anymore because I think that's even riskier. Best ratio for hypo on patios. I always use a dilution of around, around 5 to 1. That's where I start. Um, and then if I need it stronger, I'll either go in 50-50, so 1 to 1, or in very, very uh, bad cases, I'll... I'll go in neat if there's some black spots that I can't shift. <clears throat> Does hyper go off? Yes. Once it's opened, I think it's good for like a couple of months, depending on the temperature and how you're storing it. Um, I'm going to make a video out of this, by the way. So I'm sort of showing you some early content here if anyone's interested. Um... Yeah, if it gets too cold, um, it can go off. If it gets too hot, it can go off. Um, once it's opened, it's good for like just over a month, maybe. Um, and then once it's added to water as well, I think, if I can remember correctly, water is the active ingredient that that makes it um, that that activates it to make it start reacting with stuff. I think that's right. <clears throat> so as soon as you as soon as you dilute it, um, it will go off very quickly. Then evening, Richard. Welcome, mate. <clears throat> Two hundred bar, twenty one liter stainless trolley, thirty meter hose on a reel mounted on the machine. Nice. That sounds like with a with kit like that. You're not going to need to upgrade anytime soon. What I re would recommend you doing, are you planning on keeping that in the van or taking it out every time? And do you have like a buffer, like a wheelie bin that you're going to move around the property with you? And forgive me if we've already spoke about this. I speak to so many people about their setups. <clears throat> Greg, welcome. It's good to see you both. Happy New Year. Thank you, mate. And you. We booked Premier in Leamington Spa Centre. Just thought decent selection of pubs, bars, eateries are not too far from the expo. Premier, uh, Premier in Leamington Spa Centre. Would an FSC on extendable lance do the trick? On that roof clean? Um... Yeah, it'd be a good one actually. But those those little roof surface cleaners are so expensive. They're like three hundred quid and and up. Um, I ain't gonna be. I ain't spending three hundred quid on on a little twelve inch 
surface cleaner. I'd rather just stick a turbo nozzle on the end. I know it makes a little bit more mess, but for my first couple of roof cleans, I suppose when I get into it, if I get into it and it starts, you know, the, the equipment pays for itself, doesn't it? But uh, Remember, you have to take one section off to fit the adapter. What do you mean, Simon? Are you talking about the um, the high pressure? Oops, sorry. Are you saying that when I buy that at 35 feet, I've got to take a section off? to be able to fit the conversion kit because it looks like it's already sort of fitted on here and so there isn't like an, an extra section to remove because it's sort of advertised with Oh, so it's a 40 foot high pressure. No, no, no. This one looks like it is 35 foot and, and they're including the, the conversion kit. Am I reading that wrong? Because I know ordinarily you would need to take, is it the bottom or the top one off to fit that conversion kit? Hate buying poles. I don't understand half the terms they use, especially Rutland Pumps page. I usually give them a phone. There's so many different poles on the market, from like aluminium to fiberglass to fiberglass composite, carbon fiber, and then there's like multiple different stages of carbon fiber poles, which I don't really understand. Some of them are like stiffer, and some of them are lighter, and but I think you really do get what you pay for when it comes to these extendable poles. I think the more expensive ones do tend to genuinely be like a better investment than the cheaper ones. The one that I've got, which I only use for soft washing and uh, washing faces and soffits and stuff. Um, the one that I'd started out with, it's the one that I still use today, is like the cheapest one you can buy from Gardner Pole Systems. And it's just because, the, the only reason I got this one is because I was on a budget at the time. So I got the CLX-22. And I bought that with the... Um, the angle adapter I can't remember I got it with the medium soft two 50 degree fan jets I got the 10 meter hose I think I got the all seasons one because it was cheaper and then I got the anti-snag male hose lock adapter for it so that I can just plug it into the customer's hose pipe or I can plug it into my gardener backpack. And I still use that. I've got a bunch of different brushes for it. I haven't really found one that I'm really, really happy with yet. But um, the brushes are only like 35 quid. And that's the one I... Yeah, I still... I'd recommend this pole for gutters, faces and soffits. But I I can see that there's a lot, of, a lot of that sort of wobble when you're using it. And there's a lot of potentially wasted energy in trying to sort of wrestle it whereas if it was stiffer and potentially a bit lighter I wouldn't be wasting so much energy in in, in moving it around because um, it is doing that sort of work at height washing faces and soffits I I totally underestimated it it's very very difficult um, 
It takes longer than you expect, or for me anyway, it took a lot longer than I expected. And just to just to be able to be thorough where you're happy with the job that you're doing. If you're like, I'm a bit of a perfectionist and to be able to be thorough, get inside all the little gutter brackets, try and get behind the gutters as best you can. And that's just, that's just brushing in whatever chemical you're using. I, I was using TFRs, I was using Synergy Pro from Pure Seal. Um, and that's just the brushing. Then after that, you've got to do another pass where you're rinsing down with water and trying to clear all the soap off and, and not leaving any watermarks. And it's a process, man. It's, um, and when it's super high up and you've got the Gaber lens and the, is it the dormers, the sides of the, the peaks, the sides of the house where the, the soffits go all the way up the sides and you're just stretching to try and this 22 foot will do most properties. I was, I'm impressed at how high that actually goes. I'd, I'd still say this is a very good starter pole for the price. I mean, this is 196 pound plus VAT with uh, the way that I've spec'd it there. And then you can also, I'd thoroughly, thoroughly recommend the Gardener backpack as well to go with it. If you want to use pure water through it, um, I use Hypo through it, I use Biocide through it. Just straight through the water fed pole um great way of like soft washing surfaces as long as you're thoroughly rinsing it out afterwards mine's lasted well over a year now um yeah great little pump people there, there, there have been people that have had issues with theirs but i think as long as you look after it and you clean it out thoroughly every time. People tend to just hoof stuff into the back of their van and then wonder why it's broke when they when they take it out next time. It's like just take care of your gear and, and it'll last. Pretty certain Sid from Partridge Cleaning made a full video on his pole setup and he has a foot pedal. Oh nice. Uh, we have a 20 foot extended lance but not quite long enough also get a flat surface cleaner we use a cheap one which works great 27 quid far less mess don't use a turbo <laughs> i think you told me this the other day steve if you can steve if you can send me a link in discord for that 27 pound surface cleaner i'd be well uh, keen to see that mate if you don't mind if it's poles for roof cleaning you'll want the lightest poles about you'll do your shoulder and back in for the first few roofs. Check Rutland pumps, conversion kits with trigger. I can mind where I, I can mind where I got my carbon poles from, I'm sure it was them. Don't Rutland pumps do the over eight poles? Roof cleaning. Complete power poles, that's what I want. One man carbon pole, 30 foot. One man carbon pole, 30 foot with foot pedal. How come that one's, oh, with slide slider trigger. The foot pedal's cheaper than the slider trigger for the same pole, it's strange. Do we think 30 feet is enough? I mean, that's all they sell on at, at Rutland pumps. So I'm guessing 30 feet's like ideal. Mini quick release in and out foot pedal. Two man carbon pole. Why would you want a two man? I'm guessing one person on the trigger, one person holding the pole. Hmm. Let's have a look at that one. Inlet fitting. I think I've got the Teamer coupler. That's actually not bad, is it? That's a little bit cheaper than uh, than the Gutter Vacuum Systems one I was looking at. 
Oh, it's not in stock. Or is it? And they've just not updated the website. And I also, oh, it's a phantom pole. I also do wonder how different all these poles are and whether they're, some of them are just sort of rebranded poles. It's like one factory that manufactures them all. They send them out to these suppliers and they just stick their stickers on. I'm not saying this is what Rutland pumps are doing here. I just, uh, it's just a thought that popped into my head at the same time. How much would you quote for a 15 meter squared patio, small area? Um, that's hard to say because that's below, that would come out below my minimum charge. So if I was to put 15 meters squared in here and charge like three pound 50, and it comes out at 53 quid and I, I wouldn't even start the pressure washer up for that. My minimum price would be around about 125 quid. Um, you, you you should probably figure out what you need to make in a day. You know, if work's quiet and, and you're short on jobs and it's a very small patio, you know, good water access, no faffing about it, you can just get in there, blast it and, and drive off. Um, then it might be something you're happy to do at 50 quid, but for, for me... You know, if it's something you're doing on the side as well, go for it. It's experience. It's a job. You're giving the customer a good price. But if you're in full-time work, I don't think you can afford... If this is your only income, I don't think anyone can afford to spend an hour or two out of their day driving to a job, setting their equipment up, you're spending 15 minutes blasting a patio. Um, packing everything up and driving away the fuel involved, the time involved I, I think 50 quid's very cheap for something like that if that's your only source of income if you're doing it for the um, if you're doing it for the experience go for it, if you're doing it for the photos to use on your Facebook page or your website or whatever, then go for it Yeah, like William says, he's got a minimum charge of 120 quid. Mine's about 125 quid, so similar. Foot pedals. Ah, oh, I've just missed it. Foot pedals are a lifesaver on the hands and allow you to move the pole behind you. And with the pole mounted trigger, you have to short you have to shorten the pole each time you want to move closer down. With the pole mounted trigger. You have to shorten the pole each time you want to move closer down the roof. Do you not, so do you not have to do that with the foot pedal? So you're saying you're washing the top of the roof, then you want to come down to wash the middle. You open the clip, pull the pole down and close the clip and then carry on. How is that different? How would that be different if you had a foot pedal? I don't understand what you're saying there, Simon. That's just me misunderstanding, mate. I'm, I'm uh... <clears throat> Please explain about that map and measuring you just did. Um, that is Google Earth, mate. Um, so you just type in any old address on Google Earth. Um, it's got a very useful street view as well. So if you click on the bottom corner here, street view, and then click near the property, you can get a good look at what the driveway looks like. Um, just keep in mind that these images, I don't think it tells you here. On the phone version of, of, you can get the app for Google Earth. Generally tells you at the bottom corner um, when this photo was taken. So this photo here could be five years old. Um, it could have been taken last year, 
you don't know how up to date this photo is sometimes it tells you in the bottom corner i think that's only on the the phone version um but you can go up and down the street this is very basic Lot, lots of people use google earth um you can scroll real close and, and see if you can try and find the door number if someone's giving you their door number and you're trying to quote it remotely don't always go by um what the, what the images tell you so if you look if you look up here um, I'm trying to give you an example here so 82 Mason Road so if I was to type in 82 Mason Road you can't guarantee that the house you're looking at is 82 Mason Road you can't guarantee that this house is 82 Mason Road so you need to take that with a pinch of salt and instead um, go to Street View zoom in and see if you can get a door number so that one actually is at number 82 so that one's nice and accurate but most of the time they're not accurate look at that ivy on that house that's insane imagine them gutters um, and then you find your property have a little look at it have a look at where the drains are because that's quite important for pressure washing so that looks like the nearest drain just there so chances are water's going to run off the driveway downhill into that drain you're probably going to have to clean up some of the pavement here and, and you know potentially rinse down into that drain there to clean the road properly um, and then you can also hit the measure tool here and just literally click the points and it will give you not only the perimeter which is good for, for gutter clearing if you want to work out the perimeter in meters and charge by the meter that's pretty good for gutter clearing although it's quite hard to tell where the gutters are you can see some parts of the image are really dark um, so I'd never be able to quote the back patio for example from a, a Google Earth image because they just you just can't tell you can't see what you're looking at really whereas the driveways you can get a much better idea so I'd round this to about 115 meters squared um, you can adjust it once you've done it as well I think it's slightly hard you can't adjust these points on the phone version so once you've placed your markers down you, I don't think you can move them around afterwards, but you can on the desktop version here. Um, and then another thing you can do is create a project. So I could save this to project, um, Google Drive project, and this will create um, let's call this measurement uh, driveway. And you can change the colors of everything as well and then <clears throat> I can do a second measurement for say the roof for example and I can save that to the project as well so if you're doing multiple areas on a property you can save all this and then quickly navigate to it and flick through them and uh, and see what the measurements were after the fact which is quite useful and you can color code them as well so if I wanted to go in and change the color of the roof for example you can do stuff like that which is quite useful if you're putting like a project together for a school or a, a warehouse or something um, and they've got multiple different things that they want you to quote for you can just sort of break it down like this um, there's also another polygon tool that you can use if you don't want to sort of close off and fill the shape you can just click done and that'll measure the length of something and then you can go in and sort of edit these and it'll add extra marks for you here so you can 
you know you can add as much detail as you want <clears throat> so this is good for remotely quoting the only thing I'd say about quoting remotely is if you're just starting out you couldn't you can really get caught out by quoting remotely uh, one you don't get to meet the customer and build that rapport with the customer and show how much of a good salesman you are show how trustworthy and reliable you are you turn up when you say you're going to turn up you're polite you know you can't give that customer that first impression when you quote remotely also um if i'm quoting a patio remotely and the customer sent me a couple of pictures and i'm able to kind of guesstimate okay this is their patio that's what they've sent me i can see from the pictures <clears throat> a few things you might not know by looking at the pictures and measuring on google earth you might not know what the access is like so are you going to have to carry your equipment through the house is there a gate at the back that you can access the garden through is there a an outdoor tap with good water pressure that you can use is there adequate drainage these are all questions that will change the course of the job and potentially extend the job by hours and hours so you can get a good idea of the area by the, the photos that the customers are sending you and you can price it per square meter that's all fine but if you arrive and you have to carry all your equipment through the house and you're making marks on their on their carpet and it's just generally it makes the job much more awkward if you have to go through the house um or you turn their tap on and the water's just dribbling out you have to wait ages for your tank to fill or the water just don't keep up with your pressure washer anyway so you, you virtually can't do the job um or if the drain in a lot of cases with patios especially the ones i've cleaned for, for whatever reason the drains are high are at the highest point of the patio so all the water is going away from the drain and pulling up in a different area of the patio and there's nothing you can do unless you've got either a gutter vacuum or one of them dirt suckers that you clip onto the end of your lance and it kind of uses um, like a venturi effect to pull the water away and you can dump the water in a different area um, if you've not got good water pressure and you've not got good drainage and access the job will literally take twice as long so that's something you won't be able to check for if you're quoting jobs remotely you'll get better at it as you get more experience but for someone new starting out in the industry I'd encourage you to visit as many jobs as you can in person and get used to looking out for stuff <clears throat> another thing you might want to consider is if you're not taking the waste away with you like I, I don't um, I don't have a waste carrier's license I've got no interest in really taking other people's waste away with me and disposing of it it's decent stuff like majority of the time with block paving it's just sand and moss with patios it's just moss and and just general grime that would be perfectly good in either a compost pile sometimes you get away with the garden waste bin or just the plant borders and stuff so you also want to be discussing with the customers where can i leave this waste because i'm not taking it away with me you can suggest those things and most of the time they'll say i'll just stick it in the plant borders or, or i've got a compost pile at the top of the garden or stick it in the garden waste bin um, again if you're offering a level of service potentially slightly higher than mine where you're you're including taking that waste away with you in the price you need to account for that in your price per square meter as well I, I would suggest that's that's my um, that's my advice but again there's I think there's quite a few new people in the chat tonight and I just want to stress that I've only been going for like two and a half years now so I'm still very new to all this and this is all just my experience and things that I've learned along the way this isn't gospel if you go to someone else and ask them for advice they might give you some totally different advice from what I'm giving you They'll, they might tell me that I'm wrong 
they might say do it this way instead what's he talking about um take it or leave it people ask questions i do my best to answer them and uh i'm just trying to help people so i'm very grateful that people can trust me with uh with trying to give them honest advice so uh Make that calculator as a lifesaver. Oh, good. I'm, I'm very glad you finding it useful. Another thing that I found the other day, if you go on Windows 10 or 11 or whatever and pull up the calculator on there, it's, it normally looks like that, standard. I found this the other day. Um, if you click here and, type, and click on area instead, you can do a conversion, which I thought was quite cool. So if you type in like 85 feet, it'll convert it to, to like meters. Oh, this is square feet. Um, <clears throat> but that can be useful and you can switch these around as well. So if I, if I type in 85 here, it'll convert it to square feet up here. Is that right? 85 square meters is 914 square feet. That kind of sounds wrong, didn't it? But I don't know. Um, and then also you can convert uh, length as well. So if you've got like a... If you're trying to figure out, will my extendable pole reach this many meters? I know it's a 22 foot pole. Um, 22 feet, 6.7 meters. So yeah, if I measure that on Google Earth. I've done this a couple of times where I've measured from like the pitch of a roof top of a roof there down to a, probably about where, where I'm going to be standing 6.8 meters what's that in feet you can also do it here as well in Google Google Earth I just thought that calculator was quite interesting I hadn't played around with a calculator before on Windows 10 quite a few little I normally Google stuff when I want to like convert it, but this is quite useful. Uh, it is hard, but bear in mind if you use a surface cleaner on the roof, it's taking the weight of the pole. Yeah, but I also notice when you're using a turbo nozzle on a roof, as soon as you pull the trigger and that pressure kicks in, it does sort of hold itself, sort of. But I, I get your point. If you're using a surface cleaner, you can just sort of rest it on the roof and that sort of does the work for you. What about Southeast Kent area? Uh, Monkey, I'm not sure what you mean, mate. The course is still in Nantwich, but at another pub. Oh, okay. I'll put it in the group, mate. Are you in the Discord? Um, Steve, you should be able to tell who's in the Discord because they've got little stars next to their name. Can you guys see the, the people that are members? Or is it just me that can see that? For those of you that don't know what we're talking about, this is the Discord. And this is a private group for members only. And this is where we discuss our quotes. We literally talk to each other about our pricing and you know how would you price this this is what I priced this at the other day the person came back and said it was this this and this too expensive whatever and we go we go through everything together we go through marketing as well um, share our photos and stuff so if you want to be a member of the discord uh, click join on the Facebook channel on the Facebook page <clears throat> And you'll get access to that. DJ Mac, welcome. Just added that to my phone's home screen. Thank you, no worries. Um, rather than adding Google Earth in your browser to your phone to your phone's home screen, download the app instead. Download the Google Earth app from the Play Store. You might find it works better on your phone. I have an over eight pole. You can use 
you can use you may need to adapt it i have an over eight pole you can use you may need to adapt it glenn are you saying i can use your pole <laughs> that's very kind of you i'm not sure this is the kind of horror story the viewers are expecting i totally agree <laughs> i'm the same can hold for long but when i need to go it's time it's good to have a bottle in the van just in case i think squeaky clean dave's got like a i'm sure he's got a little toilet in the back of his van or something i can't remember been to see darren today at pws top man nice richard well done did you buy anything we book it in the van is what you need lad <laughs> craig welcome uh, what worked best for you finding work at the start social media leaflets everything all the work still to this day most of my work comes through my facebook page um i post most of my before and afters on facebook and i've got nineteen thousand followers on facebook now most of these followers have come from the reels that i post i, I post a few shorts you know 60 second shorts so this isn't like a true reflection of of like a a business page that's been just posting before and afters a lot of these followers have come from the reels um but at the start i was literally just before after before after before after that's how i lay out my pictures um so before after before after before after and I've just I've been doing this since I first started the business. So before, after, before, after. And it's the same. If you can, stick a little backstory in there. Give people something to read to stop scrolling. Like this one I did today or yesterday. Um we brought a sack truck along with us today to move 35 plus pots and garden furniture. Up on loading the first part onto the truck, we discovered it had two flat tires. Now my back hurts, time for a bath. So people see the first image, they think, oh, that's quite impressive, and then they stop to read. And that's how you get the most reactions and stuff to your posts. And encourage your friends and family to share stuff. When I first started, um, I did my mom's driveway and then she shared it and two people from that from her street contacted me to ask me to do their patios and then three people from her work contacted me the following few weeks and I ended up I ended up doing driveways and patios off the back of that just from my mom sharing one post it it turned into like 600 quid's worth of work so encourage your family to share your stuff. Post often. It doesn't even need to necessarily be like pressure washing related. You could you could show the equipment that you've just bought or that you're servicing your machine or that you've just had your sign writing done on the van or just anything. Anything that you're doing that's work related. Just stick it up on your Facebook page. The thing I've started to do now is because my Facebook business page and my Instagram account are linked I can make one post on my Instagram account and it automatically shares it to my Facebook business page providing they're linked properly so rather than posting on multiple different platforms you can just do it in one which is really useful so that's what I've been doing lately um, posting from Instagram and then it goes to my Facebook as well but yeah from the very beginning it was always this is some Christmas lights we were doing, look. It was just Facebook from the very beginning. I never used leaflets, never had a website, never did Instagram, never did TikTok. Um, that's, um, that's back clear 50. That was just scraping the moss off the roof, applying the back clear 50, and this is 12 months, 12 months later, and that's how it looks. Which is pretty impressive. 
Nothing worse than having absolutely nowhere to go to the toilet. Try being stuck driving on a bus, nowhere to go, no facilities, and the terminus, and that bad no option, but use the bottle up if you're lucky, a bush. <laughs> Uh, habitually used Google Maps, never really looked at Google Earth. Yeah, I think Google Earth has a few more quality of life features that Google Maps doesn't have when it comes to measuring stuff. Willy bin buffer, so the machine on a separate vibration skid so it can be van mounted later. Nice. Sounds like you've got a good kit there, Express Services. <clears throat> 35 foot pole section one is taken out, yep. On a standard pole, you have to. That 35 foot GVS pole is pre built, so you wouldn't have to take a section off. Looks like a good deal. Okay, perfect. Would that be the same for the. for the Rutland Pumps pole that I just looked at, the pre built ones? Because those are 30 foot. It looked, it looked like they were, they were pre built, 30 foot. Everything's already sort of on there. I'm catching up with the messages, guys. I am catching up. I started off with a 24, 24 foot pole. If you're taking roof cleaning serious, defo need to get something carbon fiber. I upgraded to a 45 foot carbon phantom pole, bought a conversion kit from PWS. Nice, South Wales exterior cleaning. Do you think a 45 foot pole is overkill or are you happy with your purchase? I fear that if I went for like a big pole like that, There'll be sections that I just never use and it, it feel like a little bit of a waste of money and it's heavier. Do you think 45 feet is like manageable for like daily use? I've got a 40 foot water fed pole, which I'm using with a 47, 47 liter battery powered tank that has pure water in it for windows. If I was to soft wash, should I get a separate kit? Yeah, if you're using pure water in that tank, I wouldn't be adding chemicals to it. No matter how well you wash that tank out, there's going to be some sort of residue left over. And with the idea of pure water is that it's pure and it's got no impurities in it. And so um, I'd recommend having two. And these gardener backpacks are cheap enough. 120 quid for a gardener backpack and if you're doing regular window cleaning and soft washing as well um i think it's a good investment to get too <clears throat> over eight poles are good for roof cleaning due to the shape of the pole no twisting and stiffer are the over eight poles literally ovals because i saw a picture of one the other day I thought, oh my god that's literally like an oval I've seen some sort of hexagonal shaped poles as well. But if it is an oval and it's like facing upwards, I can see what you mean. There wouldn't be any flex. There'd be some flex, but there wouldn't be like crazy flex. Would you use an extended pressure washing lance for gutters? Squeaky clean Dave does. I'm not sure that I would trust myself pressure washing like PVC. No matter how sort of low pressure um, I don't know if that's a good idea, personally. I think he uses a turbo nozzle on super low pressure. And he says it's great, he's never scrubbing gutters again. But what I have noticed is he's still scrubbing gutters with a water-fed brush to apply, like the Synergy Pro, for example. He's still putting the chemicals on and scrubbing with a brush. And then getting the pressure washer out and doing like a light pass with the turbo nozzle. That seems like... You're not really saving any time there. I'd have to try it. I haven't made my mind up on it. And I haven't experienced it, so I can't like honestly say. He he says it's better, so it's it's clearly better. Um DMG the surface cleaner on Discord. Thank you, mate. I swear I had this when I first started my business. This little plastic one. 
Is it a something USA one? Maybe it's a rebranded one. Do you not think a 15 inch one is too big or, or is it like a good size for the stuff that you're doing? Because most of the roof cleaning surface cleaners are like 12 inch, 12 or 13 inch, aren't they? I suppose that's mainly for the weight, isn't it? Because they're normally steel, stainless steel. And if you're going any bigger than that, it's going to be quite a lot of quite a lot of weight at the end of the pole. But these ones are like poly polycarbonate. They're a very light cheap plastic but if they do the job it's 25 quid like you, you can't really go wrong can you if you say it works then even if it breaks after a month it's 25 quid honestly mate try it you only use half revs anyway on a roof it's nice and light so easy to maneuver the stiff brushes help to take the moss off easy to lift off to float rinse as well can't do that with the heavy metal ones. I think you're onto something there, Steve, to be honest, mate. That does sound ideal, really. Don't waste your time on 24 foot. Trust me, way too flimsy. 100% get a foot pedal. Well, I suppose 24 foot. What do you mean way too, way too flimsy? It depends what, what sort of pole you get, doesn't it? It's only flimsy if you get like one of the cheaper inferior poles. Foot pedal and conversion kits, PWS. Roof cleaning equipment. Foot pedals, pole adapters, water fed poles. They've got the Phantoms as well. Phantom hybrid 35 foot. Phantom carbon 50 foot. I don't think I need 50 feet. Ooh, that's a nice idea. That little bungee on the end. My gardener pole, the if you rest it on the floor, the hose sort of sort of just kinks underneath the pole. Whereas that would stop that happening. That's a really good idea. Hmm. I don't like the idea of having to buy all the bits separately though to do the conversion kit. Because I don't know what I'm buying. I don't know if everything fits. I don't want to buy an extendable pole and realize I have to lose a whole section to fit something. That just seems like a waste of money. Because these pole sections aren't cheap. They're like, they're a lot of money. You do it less. I think he means your hand won't be on the trigger. So you can just pass the pole through your hands if you had a foot pedal. I see what you're saying. Thank you, Hunts. Simon, I think I know what you mean. You don't have to keep your hand at the base of the pole on the trigger. Because there's no trigger there. You can just pass the pole through your hands to make those minor adjustments. Rather than having to move it down every time because you're locked in place because that triggers there. That's the base point all the time. Whereas your base point can move around if you if you have the trigger on a foot pedal. I understand what you're saying. Do you find that 
it's clumsy having to move the foot pedal around all the time. Is that annoying or is it just fine? It's not a big deal. When you use the foot pedal, you can feed the pole through your hands, which gives you more movement ability with the trigger. With the trigger mounted on the pole, one hand is always on that trigger, limiting the movement. Sorry, yep, totally understand now. I've seen that people tie wrap to the trigger shut. Wrap to... Sorry. I've seen people tie wrap the trigger shut and run it off a ball valve on the lance. That always seems quite dangerous to me. <laughs> Wrapping a trigger or sticking like a tennis ball in the trigger so that it stays open. Mac, no worries, mate. Bit of lag on the chat tonight, which is great to see loads of questions and ideas. Yeah, I mean, I, I stream in um, low low latency, so pretty much as you type your message, I see it. The trouble is, I'm scrolling back up to try and catch the messages I've missed, so you have to bear with me, guys. I am trying my best. I, the reason I do these live streams is not to faff about and, and sort of do my own thing and ignore you guys. I want to come on and, and answer as many questions as I can um, and, and talk to you. So for me to be ignoring the chat would be would be a waste of time, waste of both of our times. I like your advice. We'll be doing my first pressure washing in spring. Nice. Martin, why wait till spring? If you've got the equipment, just start. I know... Um, I know the main pressure washing season does begin at sort of mid-February, March. Um, but there's no reason why you can't start practicing now. What's the furthest you travel for a job? You going? Yeah. Have fun. How many laps are you going to do? Today. They're not called laps, are they? No. Nope. They're called lengths. <laughs> How many lengths are you going to do? How many kilometres are you going to swim? Oh, not kilometres. You, you did it in kilometres last time, didn't you? No. K. K, that's kilometres. Thousand. Yeah, thousand metres. No, if you say two and a half K, I've got two and a half K in my bag. Thousand? Two and a half K is two and a half thousand metres which is 2.5 kilometers. Okay, well, I didn't mean it like that. I was just saying it was 2.5. Okay. You meant 2.5, okay. No. Bye. You do, you do do kilometers though, because your lengths are in meters, hundreds of meters. Yeah. Okay, don't forget the McFlurries. I'll send you some money. Love you. Love you. What's the furthest you travel for a job? Um, it depends on the job, mate. If it's worth the travel, and I always tell this to the customer, I'm happy to visit you two or three hundred miles away if needs be. But I'm going to charge you for the travel. I'm going to charge you for the fuel and the time in the van, and potentially even a hotel room if I'm if I'm far enough away, and I'm having to stay over if it's multiple days and stuff. So I'm very clear and upfront with the customer that you know that this is the price because I've included travel and time and fuel and whatever. So if it's a big enough job, I'll travel wherever. I'll go to France if it's a big enough job. Trust me, you'll come across a big roof one day and you'll need that extra couple of feet plus if an ex plus if extended out from the bottom first on smaller roof give you even more strength in the pole. Yeah. I didn't think of that. So, so like a 45-foot pole 
extended to 20 feet would be stiffer than a 20 foot pole fully extended. I didn't think of that because you've got multiple layers of pole within the first stack. <clears throat> it's just the weight that concerns me. I don't want to go too, too big and have to then carry all this weight around with me even when I'm doing smaller jobs. I'll be ordering a gardener backpack now. Nice, Taylor. Tell them I sent you. I should really get some sort of affiliate deal with Gardener as well, the amount that I'm promoting them guys. <laughs> Picked up an 18 litre backpack sprayer by a friend in Poland. $30, all bits, pump built in, looks the business. Now just need the weather to give it a test. Nice, that's awesome. Do you guys, are there any window cleaners in the chat? I know what I can do. I've started a poll. I want to know how many people offer window cleaning services. Um, do you guys clean windows when it's raining? This could be a stupid question. Could be very stupid. But my thought process is pure water, isn't that essentially? rainwater or is pure is pure water even even purer than rainwater <clears throat> but like if you're cleaning windows using a water fed pole with a brush and pure water does it make a difference if it's raining or can you still go out and do it it's just a bit more miserable the issue would be is that to do your job you have to look up at the sky and get rained on at the same time while you're doing it. So that's a bit annoying. <clears throat> if anyone hasn't seen my latest video, by the way, um, I put one out today at half five this evening. I think it's doing quite well compared. Oh God, it is bloody hell. Normally, my videos do about, within the first 24 hours, my videos do around about 100 views per hour. So within the first 24 hours, it's sat at around 2,000 views, roughly. And then it really teeters off and then doesn't really improve much across the rest of the week. Um, but this one's done at 880 views in three hours, which isn't bad for me, really. Curbside. I went from two roofs this time last year, and then from August to December, ended up doing about 15. You'll need a bigger van and storage or smaller profit margins as you can rent towers. Bloody hard work, but a great service to add. Um, I think we should get in touch with Curbside Cleaning and see if they want to join us on these live episodes there's a few people i've got lined up that i want to chat to that i've contacted um ben from rutland pumps he said he'll talk to me and he's he's invited me to go and visit the workshop my accountant is up for uh, doing a live chat i think that would be very useful for some of you guys to me mainly so i can just ask him all the questions that have been going through my head but are you guys just starting your businesses? Especially like the start of this year, actually, that'd be very good timing. I can imagine a lot of you are looking to start in the next couple of months. Um, I think that'd be quite a useful one to do. Um, Darren from PWS, he's a regular on here. 
Julia again from Gutter Vacuum Systems. Um, last time she was on, we did, they did, um, like a £500 giveaway, which is insane. Sid Partridge, I think, I, I don't know if he's, uh, I don't know if it's his thing really, he seems very, very busy. And, um, yeah, he might be up for it, I don't know. I might have already messaged him, I've messaged a couple of people on Instagram to be honest. I very rarely get replies. I don't think anyone's really heard of me. We're still only a small entity. We're a small channel. What are we at now? Thirty-three thousand subscribers. We're making a dent, aren't we? Um, so, if anyone hasn't seen this new video. Um, Feel free to go and watch it after the uh, live stream ends. I wonder if anyone's um, contacted me about... I actually had a phone call earlier. I don't know whether that was someone from the stream trying to get in touch. Or, uh, or a potential customer. Um, so 17%, there's 12 votes, 17% of us do window cleaning, and the other 80% don't. 83% they don't. How long have you been doing YouTube for? It's a good question. My first video was posted a year ago. It started out as just like advice for new starters, which I'd like to get back to a little bit um, because that's what I enjoy doing. Most of the content these days is kind of just on the job learning and just talking through what I'm doing. I would like to get back to like specifically crafted videos that cover a certain subject. <clears throat> Are you always using a tripod for filming YouTube and what gear do you use? Um, the main thing I have always used is my phone for filming. I've got a Google Pixel 6 that has an incredible camera. I film in 1080p, 60 frames per second, and the footage looks incredible. I can't believe that the footage I use on YouTube comes from a camera phone, from a, a yeah, a smartphone. I broke it the other day. So now I'm back to my Google Pixel 5, which is equally good. Fantastic camera on this phone. They just won, actually, the, um, if you look at the MKBHD video that he recently posted, he did like the smartphone camera test award. So this video here, um, the Google Pixel surprisingly like beat the iPhone in most of the categories. I think the iPhone was better in low light situations. But just the photos, it was like a blind photo test. They put all the phones out. Uh, there's a website. People went on there, voted back the two pictures. They voted which picture was best. And consistently, in most categories, the Google Pixels came out on top. And so they won the overall average. I think it was like first place out of all the phones, all the flagships. First place, it was like Pixel 6 or, or Pixel 7. Then it was second place Pixel 8 Pro or something. Then in third place it was like Pixel 6a 
all three pixels are at the top and then it's like iPhone, Samsung and so on. Um, and I do use a tripod. I've just got like a generic cheap tripod off Amazon or I think I got it from Argos actually. And then recently, you can't even see what I'm doing. This is the video I'm talking about, the blind smartphone camera test, MKBHD. Um, and then recently I've just invested in for my time lapses and stuff and my more vloggy, vloggy style content. Are you kidding? I can't believe what I'm seeing right now. I've just paid full price for this. 400, 469 quid I've just paid for this camera. And now they've just reduced it. Literally a week and a half ago. Great. Um, but it was either... It was either a... Uh, like a GoPro. Or an action camera. I thought... I went for the DJI because I can use it as a webcam really, really easily, which I love. Um, the time lapses are beautiful. The shots... Some of the shots don't necessarily look like they've come from an action camera, whereas... Um, GoPro footage, you can tell, has come from an action camera. I think you can spot GoPro, GoPro footage a mile off and I don't like it. So I think the DJI is a little bit nicer. Um, so that's what I'm using for my time lapses now. <clears throat> I think I upscale when I'm using this on normal mode. I'm upscaling it. I'm shooting at like two two K instead of ten eighty p, and then I'm downscaling it when I'm uh, editing the videos. Where did you get your black work jackets from? Are they Port West? Do they do matching trousers? I don't know what Port West is. Um, there's a chap that I used to ride bikes with. I used to ride BMX. And he works at a shop. And Callum from uh, Pure... Uh, Callum from Solar Secure actually used to work here as well. It's called Orchard Clothing in Redditch. Um, they haven't got really anything on their website, which is a little bit annoying. But if you contact Richard, uh, just send them an email or phone them or whatever. Tell them Jake sent you. Because I would love for these guys to... So many people have been asking me about the workwear that I've got. And the beanies. And, um, I mean, the embroidery on these is beautiful. And the colours, they can, they can match your colours perfectly. And they're cheap, they're nice and cheap. Once they've got your design... They can replicate it like on, on anything. I've got flat caps. I've got um, big bomber jackets, waterproof. I've, I've got like nice soft shell jackets that I use to go out and quote stuff. They can print, they can embroid. Um, I'd love to do some sort of deal with them. And like, this is the sort of business that I'd like to have as like an official channel sponsor because they're local to me they're literally just down the road and like i really like their stuff thank you for the uh for the new subs i have a 900 square meter block paving quote to do on thursday which is the largest driveway i've ever been asked to do do i lower my square meter price or keep my price the same 
Is it a commercial job or residential? If it's a commercial job, I would suggest not lowering your price. If it's residential, I would suggest potentially lowering your price. So for me, that would be, that would be up there at like three and a half grand, including sand. That is monstrous. And what's your process? Are you, is that turbo nozzle, the whole thing, or are you using like a surface cleaner? and just getting the top layer of muck off. Are you resanding it? Is it permeable block paving where instead of sand, you've got to use grit? Do they even want it resanding? Um, are you going to have to chemically treat it? What are you going to do with all the waste from 900 square meters of block paving? That's going to be insane. Is that one driveway as well? That's crazy. Is it like a shared driveway or just a big house? Martin, thank you. What's all these new subs doing? Where, where are all these people coming from? Wonder if these people are watching the stream or they're subbing from the video that I've just posted. <clears throat> You'll be surprised, but them carbon poles are very, very light. Get to PWS, he'll sort you out with everything. Might have to give Darren a shout. I've got to head over at some point soon anyway to get my heater fitted in the van so this is an, exam an example of washing um, concrete pavers can't zoom in here but you can kind of see the stripes that I'm leaving and that was sorted out with uh, with hypo luckily Plus, if you're using for roof cleaning, that big machine you got will have no problem holding the weight up. Yeah, I mean, with roof cleaning, you turn you turn the PSI and the flow down anyway, don't you? When are you up the ladder with the gutter back? When, sorry, when you are up the ladder with the gutter back hose, aren't you tempted to suck, suck up some of the moss on the roof? I do, it's very satisfying. Plus, do you gutter back the valleys on the roofs? This is a controversial subject. It's not a controversial subject. It's something that I think about internally and I have conversations with the customer in my head if they were to ask. No one's ever said anything, but I believe those valleys that go up the roof, they're not part of the gutter system. That's not what I've quoted. Greg, thank you for watching, mate. I really appreciate it. We'll catch up with the rest of your podcast tomorrow. Take care. Thank you, mate. Um, when I'm quoting a gutter clear, that, those valleys that go up the corner of the houses and up the garages and stuff, that's part of the roof. That's not part of the gutter system. And so if the customer asked me, I could definitely say, I'm happy to clear those out for you, but I'd have to charge you a little bit more I mean I've always just cleared the gut I, it is tempting I've always just cleared the gutters out and the customers have always been satisfied unless they've specifically asked me to um, to clear those valleys because it is a lot of extra work and it's it's not something that's easily accessible with your gutter poles because your poles the flexi goes over like that and then to reach and extend and try and clear the valleys as well it's a different angle from what from what you're clearing the gutters out at so you have to almost put a different adapter on the end to be able to get to those valleys so i don't, I don't think it's worth it personally but if they're specifically asking for it i'd just account for it in the price <clears throat> the fact that you do it just off your own back anyway if you do it, um, that's very cool of you. 33k subs in a year, that's class. I think it's all right. It's um, my subscribers come from my shorts. So I get maybe a couple of extra su subscribers per video for all these videos. The shorts are where I, I get the majority of views 
coming in and new people coming into the channel. So this one I posted the other day has got 44,000 views in comparison to my regular videos, which struggled to get past 2000. Um, so my shorts very often do blow up quite well. That one's at, that one's at almost a million now. Um, I've got a few that have pushed past a million. That one's at 1.3. And this is where all my subscribers come from. So, I'd, and I don't think these people are necessarily looking for this content that we're doing now. I think these are just people looking for satisfying shorts and hoping I'll keep repost that, reposting those. So that 33,000 subs isn't a true reflection of what the channel's about really. I think if it was just the content I was posting to help new people get started, I'd probably I'd probably be at less than a thousand subs. But it's because I'm I'm being quite consistent with all these shorts that I'm posting. That one's almost at 10 million. How big is your ladder? How big's your ladder? <laughs> um, I have no idea. I've got a two section ladder, which looks like a normal two section ladder that people have sat down the side of their house. And then I have a triple ladder, which feels very similar, just with an additional section on it. So I actually don't know how high they are. Um, I love my triple ladder though. Sophie's brother gave it to me because he said he didn't use it anymore. And it's been the best thing over Christmas when I've been doing those Christmas lights. I wouldn't have been able to do them Christmas lights without that triple ladder. Getting to the gable ends, getting to the very top of them peaks and actually having the bar that goes across the bottom to stabilize the ladder. I don't have that on the double set. I've only got it on the triple set and it's been an absolute lifesaver. I feel so much more sta stable on the ladder. What van would you recommend starting out? I can't answer that question, to be honest, mate. It depends what you're looking for in a van. I just wanted a small van that had three seats so that I can fit the two kids. Um, so I can pick them up from school and, and, and nursery. I just wanted like a small van that sort of resembled a car because I was just sort of starting out. And I've made it work. I can't believe I've made that van work for like over a year and a half now. I was supposed to look for a new van today, but I forgot because I was busy doing other stuff. But I think I will be, I think I'll probably have a new van by the end of this month, which is exciting, but kind of daunting at the same time because I don't like spending money. And this one, I have outgrown this one. I'm making some sacrifices to make this van work at the moment. I'm having to take... I'm having to literally pull stuff in and out of it every day to tailor it to sort of suit the job that I'm doing. I think that's quite common for a lot of people. Um, I want like a big stocky van where, I, where I'm never going to struggle for room again. If anyone's interested in my setup, actually it's probably not a good representation at the moment because my setup's changed quite a lot. If you're interested in what you can fit in a van this size, um, my pressure washing breakdown of equipment, I posted this about a year ago now as well. This is one of my first videos I did. Uh, I got everything listed in my description. So if you want to copy my build or find out where I purchased stuff from, it, everything's always in the descriptions. Um, but you can fit a decent amount of stuff in a little Peugeot partner. But now that I've got a big 30 litre per minute van mounted system with hose reels and I'm carrying gutter vacuums around with me as well. 
it's not really enough and i've got rid of the roof rack now as well i'm not even carrying that roof rack anymore because i've had to put the triple ladders on top so that's a lot of space that i've lost This is still the reel that I've got. <clears throat> that was a used one from Equip to Clean. I've just put a different hose on it since then. And this was all just this is all just strapped down to the to the floor of the van. Took the took the handle off the frame of the pressure washer to make it a bit smaller. <clears throat> Told you to get that phone get phone case that goes around the, ne the neck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I've ordered a different phone case actually for it when it does go off and get repaired. I'll have to sort that out tomorrow. It's a residential one. It's going to take a few days with a surface cleaner, 18 inch shared driveway. We'll let you know next week whether I get the job and what will be included. <clears throat> Yeah, send send me some pictures and stuff because I'd be quite interested to see that. That's massive. Nine hundred square meters is huge. I think the biggest block paving job I've ever done, including a resand, was about two hundred and fifty square meters, and and that took me all day. I, I've actually got a. I think I've got a video of that. And you can you can just see the amount of muck that came off it. <clears throat> it's cool because I can look back and most of the jobs, most of the big good jobs that I've done, I've got videos of. So there's this one here, nine hours straight pressure washing on this property. So this was just a little bit out the front. They didn't even park their cars on this area. <clears throat> Casually got a boat on the drive. Then this is the little alley down the side, which is probably bigger than most people's drives. And then they got this huge block paved area out the black out the back as well. Even more behind the camera as well. Yeah, I think this was the biggest job I'd done. Yeah, just constantly battling sludge. The amount of sand and moss and sludge that comes out of these block pavers is incredible. Luckily, they had a, a compost pile down behind the shed, or just like a, a, an area where I could tip the stuff out down behind the shed. This is also something you need to establish, like um, where are you going to dump all that waste? Because because that there's going to be a lot. How much practice did you do before getting your first quote? Um, not a lot, really. I, I started doing friends and family. I did Sophie's mum's drive, which was a massive drive to do, you know, as a first drive. Um, that gave me a good idea of how, how long, a, you know, a big drive will take with a small machine. I did my mum's drive. And then from the pictures of, of those two, um, I started getting my customers, started, started just getting straight into it, really. A lot of friends and family were contacting me since seeing those pictures. And I sort of timed it at like a good time of year. Yeah, just, just start doing it, man. Um, 
that a lot of people will will wait for the per the people will wait for the stars to align and they'll wait for they wait till spring they'll wait till they get this piece of equipment before they'll start the job they'll wait till they get a new camera before they'll start filming the job they'll wait till they get a bigger car or a van before they you know and there's so many excuses and so many reasons not to start right now that you will keep talking yourself out of it and i did that and I, i'm i'm terrible for it <clears throat> when i'm looking at buying something i do so much research i spend hours and hours and hours researching something and then i talk myself out of buying something that i need this camera was like a something i've i've spent six months thinking about buying and i kept saying no i don't need it i'm not going to use it that much it's you know i've got my phone everything's fine and because i'm so tight but it's like that with other decisions as well especially when it comes to doing something as big as starting your own business um there's a fantastic video if you if you just need to be inspired To start your business it's a short video um, spring is the worst time to start your business watch this video I, I'd encourage anyone who's looking to start their business to watch this video because I think it was could have been the video that would give me the kick up the ass to be honest when was it posted oh no it was a year ago so it was after i started but um it makes such a good point and it literally resonated with me so much just being a bit of a procrastinator and putting so many walls up that you never eventually you never actually do the thing you really want to do because you convince yourself that it's a bad idea <laughs> I've put that video in the chat, by the way. Would it be possible to power wash tomorrow? I've just had a, um, a quote come in from Google Maps. I own a lodge that flooded recently has left my deck in a, an outdoor storage cupboard and the contents very dirty. Would it be possible to power wash tomorrow? Any chance you could send me some photos, please? I rarely get, I rarely get messages through Google Maps. That's from my business page on Google Maps. That's curious. We'll send some pitch. Okay. Um, if you're up a ladder on your own, you can use a bag of sand to foot the bottom. Might help. That's a good idea. Very good idea. If the budget allows a Renault, Renault traffic or something similar, H2L2. Yeah, I was speaking to um, Darren from PWS the other day and he suggested a H2L2. Um, that's a height two wheelbase, wheelbase or length of two as well. And th that proportion of van is like ideal for a pressure washing business, he said. So I'll have to I'll have to look at those. I was looking at a um Peugeot Boxer H two L two something like this I think would be ideal for me. I'm gonna look into those tomorrow I think. <clears throat>
The sludge will be a nightmare, it will. 900 square meters of block paving, shit of brick. I'd keep the price the same, maybe tail off a bit, as it's a nice job. 12 inch, no doubt sweet spot. You can't go wrong with this for the money. What are we talking about there? 12 inch is no doubt a sweet spot. You can't go wrong with this for the money. Oh, we're talking about the surface cleaner. We'll keep it at my normal rate. I'll just pressure wash on myself to get the job, but then all you do, but then all you do is do yourself out of profit. It's just having the confidence in your own work. How long have you been going, Simon? How many block paving jobs have you done so far? I think I'm going to call it there, guys. Um, I really appreciate everyone watching tonight. There's been a, a bunch of new people in the chat that I haven't seen their names here before. So that's really cool. Um, I do this every week. And so... Um, <clears throat> If you've got some questions and stuff that you're pondering throughout the week, send them this way. And uh, hello, Ched. Yeah, it's going to be minus two pretty much every night this week. So wrap up your pressure washers. Do your best to keep them warm to avoid uh, damage. Tune in again next week. Half seven and then half five for the uh, for the new videos every week. Um, you've done about 30 block paved driveways. Okay, so, so you know what to expect. It's That's going to be a, a big, big job. 900 square meters is pretty massive. But find out what the customer wants. Do they just want the surface cleaning? In which case, you could just buzz over it with the flat surface cleaner. Do they want a deep clean, getting everything out from between the joints? In which case, you'll have to turbo the whole lot. Do they want a chemical treatment? Do they want it resanding afterwards? What's your water pressure like? What's your drainage like? Where's all that waste going? They're all very important questions, I think. <clears throat> thank you, Andrew. Is that the real Andrew Tate? Um, thank you so much for watching, everyone. I'm just going to play a little advert. I hope you don't mind, and then I'll, I'll, I'll head off. So thanks so much. Have a good evening. See you in a bit. Now these videos take a lot of time and effort to film and edit on top of trying to run a successful pressure washing business. If you find any of the information in my videos useful, then I'd like for you to consider becoming a paid member of the channel. Circle members and above will get access to my private Discord for members only, where you can pretty much get a hold of me 24 hours a day for inspiration, technical help, marketing advice, or just a general chat. I post pictures and videos that you won't see on any of my other socials. You'll be the first to hear about giveaways, special offers and announcements. And it's just generally a nice place full of like-minded people who are all heading towards similar goals. We've got various different experience levels. We've got a few professionals in the chat as well. If you want to push your business, in my opinion, this is the place to be. We also have two other membership tiers. One is just to show a bit of support for the channel and the other one is for boosted members which will not only give you access to the private Discord but also loads of high quality promotional images for you to start your business. I know what it's like when you're ready to get going but you don't have any before and after pictures to put on your leaflets. At the moment there's about 150 images that you can use for pretty much whatever you like and my intention is to constantly update these over the next few years with all of my before and afters that have helped promote my business. Last thing before I let you go New videos come out every Monday night at half five, and then I go live at half seven to chat to you guys and answer as many questions as possible. We do live quotes for real customers and just generally keep up to date with everything going on in the pressure washing world. Thanks for watching, back to the video.